my heart that I am set aside for such a time as this. Let me tell you where I've come from. Let me be as honest as I can be. I grew up in the church, in the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. I am in love with the tradition started by Thomas and Alexander Campbell and Barton Stone. I am immersed in what it means to be a disciple, to have that open table, to have that place where I can come and I can just share what it is I am and learn and not be hindered by having to believe a certain dogma or having to follow a certain way. It was okay growing up asking questions. It was okay to not know the answers as long as you were searching them out. And through that tradition, I found my call to be a minister. And that's been a lifelong journey for me. And it started out as a journey of music because it was the only way I could express myself. Through a four minute song, I could hear the meaning of the song and I wanted to share it with others. And I thought that's where I was going to be. But God has different plans than we do. And I found that that call to music started to grow into something deeper and more extensive than a song. My call was to share the word of God for the people of God. And that bothered me in the depth of my stomach because as I was ordained and as I took my call, I saw that our church was hurt and hurting. And the people outside the church were hurt and hurting. And I started to see where there was a problem. We stopped relating. We stopped gathering. We stopped getting to know the people who were next door to us. We stopped knowing our neighbor and started closing in. And the church did it. And we have done it. And it brings me to today. So I want to read a scripture for you. It's from John 17, verses 15 through 18. Father, I don't ask you to take my followers out of the world. But keep them safe from the evil one. They don't belong to this world, and neither do I. Your word is truth. So let's make this truth. Let's make them completely yours. I'm sending them into the world, just as you have sent. realized that my first problem being a minister in today is just Jesus. Because it is the popular thought today that Jesus just never existed. That there wasn't a historical Jesus. I want to talk about the salvation of Christ. About the glorious redemption that comes with having a relationship with God, but I've got to share the story that Jesus existed first. And that's crazy to me. I cannot imagine that that's where we would be today. That we actually have to start so simplistically that Jesus was a real man who lived in Galilee and did amazing things. But he did. He did, and when he did, he didn't do it on his own. That's a really important part of the story. Because Jesus 
had a time period. He had 36 years, and then he passed it off. He passed it on. He called the disciples. And when he called the disciples, they put down their nets and left everything and followed. And boy, can I imagine how scary that is to know that you are called to do such wondrous things, but you have to put down everything in order to do it. You have to put down your nets, so to speak, whatever your nets are. What a, maybe it's your comfort within the church. Maybe it's your discomfort outside the church. But God calls. God calls, and we have a choice whether or not to listen. See, it's not we are called to be disciples and then we go out and do. It's we're called to be disciples, we go out and learn, and then we go out to do. That's what we're here for. We're here for a relationship, not a job. We're here for connection, not a title. Problem today. The problem is churches aren't teaching anymore. The problem is churches aren't connecting anymore. You can't go into most churches today and have some and feel like you're comfortable unless you know their language. They're not going to learn your language. And I can't stand that. Why are we there? Why is that the story today? Why aren't we speaking the language outside the church? Because God lives all over, not just in the sanctuary. <laughs> That's why fig tree is here. Because it's been a long winter. And I've seen the pain that churches can inflict on others, and I have felt the pain that churches can inflict on others. You think you're safe being a lifetime Christian, but we're too hurt. And wounded animals will bite the hand that feeds them. Na, na, na. So the fig tree is here because I see the sprout. I see the potential. I see the twig popping out of the cold soil, and I know that someone's coming. I know it because I can feel it in the gut, in my deepest part of my being. Summer is coming, and I need you. I need you because this is not a journey that we do alone. This is a journey that we fellowship with that we commune with, that we become a people of God, the body of Christ. And we have to know that the disciples 2,000 years ago did their part. They dropped their nets and they followed Jesus. And now I am asking, drop your nets. Drop your nets and follow me. Let's learn about Jesus Christ. Let's have real discussions. Let's openly ask the questions that need to be asked. Because summer is coming. Because summer is coming and we need it so bad. We need it so desperately bad. The disciples did their part. Now it's time to do our part. Follow me. If you want to take that next step, contact me. Let's do it. Let's get excited about something again instead of just getting upset and worried. Let's do this. Because it's the right thing to do, not because it's the popular thing to do. Let's start.
dart in this thing. Let's get this going. 